Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. I am here on a Monday in a very hot day. It was 91 degrees when I left my office today and I am luckily inside in the air conditioning and talking to you guys, which just makes the end of a Monday much, much better better. It was a busy weekend and very warm here as well. I hope you all had a great weekend. Today's video I'm going to just focus on something I'm calling six short books to beat a reading slump. Um, I have found when I'm in a reading slump one of the things that I'm able to do is if I can find like a short novella or very short novel that kind of just packs a quick punch that I can get out of my reading slump. I can almost jump start myself back into the reading that I want to be doing. So the first two books that I'm going to talk about are probably the most um, well-known, but I think if you haven't read them, you really should. And if you have read them, maybe a revisit, if you are in a little bit of a slump, could really help out. And the first one is The Uncommon Reader by Alan Bennett. Isn't this a great copy? It's super short. Look at that. It's not, I think it's like less than 100 pages. Oh, it's 120 pages. This is a very charming tale about Queen Elizabeth II and her relationship with the mobile library um, that uh, parks behind uh, the castle one day and she stumbles into it and checks out a book just because she thinks she should and then kind of develops a relationship with that library and reading. And it's all about the joys of becoming a reader again, if you haven't been a reader, and if you have been a reader. And I think that that's really important for us to remember when we're in a slump, why we read, and why we read just day in and day out, because it's so important to all of us. So that's The Uncommon Reader by Alan Bennett. It's a charming little book, and I really think you'll like it. The next book I'm going to tell you about is actually 84 Charing Cross Road by Helen Hanaf. Hanaf? I'm saying that wrong. Hanf? Um, I'm horrible with names. I'm really sorry. But this is an epistolary novel told all in um, letters between um, Helene, who is writing to an English bookstore. And what is the name of the gentleman that writes her back? Frank. He works at an English bookstore, and she and he have and develop this very charming relationship between each other, talking about books and sharing information. She becomes pen pals not only with him, but with the people that work at the store and his family. And it's about searching out literature and talking about books. I personally didn't know a single book that she was looking for. Um, it's their sort of... Um, books from antiquity or philosophy or history, which isn't my normal go-to, but um, it's so charming and so endearing, and you really just love this relationship between this sort of proper English gentleman and this American woman who you picture smoking, chain smoking over a typewriter as she types these letters. It's a very, very cute movie with Anthony Hopkins and Anne Bancroft, I believe. And I think if you uh, read the book and then see the movie, you'll truly enjoy both of them. And I hadn't heard about this book until a few years ago and everybody was like where have I been and I don't know where I've been it's probably one of my favorite books and it's totally enduring so that's 84 Charing Cross Roads by Helene Hamp and um, I have to thank Thomas over at uh, Hogglestock and the readers for really uh, pushing me on that book and encouraging me because I wouldn't have read it and now it's in my favorites so there you go the next book I'm going to tell you about is Train Dreams by Dennis Johnson. Now, I haven't read a lot by Dennis Johnson, and he wrote Tree of Smoke, which I won, won the Pulitzer or the National Book Award, I can't remember. Um, he wrote a book called Jesus' Son that I know has a lot of really good press. But this is a short little book. I bought this book on a whim at um, Liter Literati? Literati Bookstore in Ann Arbor, Michigan when I was there with my friend Ryan before we went to Booktopia Potosky. Um, and it is a powerful punch of a novel. It is um, about, I want to say his name, Robert Grainer. He's a day laborer in America at the turn of the century. And it's basically about a tragic accident. I'm trying to remember if it tells you. I don't want to say. But he loses his family. And in losing his family, he then sort of starts this adventure across America. It is one of the most beautiful little books that you will ever read. It has sort of a... 
I won't say I won't, a Hemingway slash who like those quintessential American writers that just get the Midwest. Um, it's so good, guys. And you probably haven't heard of this, and you probably will read it and be like, I need to read everything by Dennis Johnson. It's so good. And that is um, Train Dreams. And just what a cute little cover that is, too. The next book I'm going to tell you about is called Disgrace by J.M. Coetzee. Now, no one is probably unfamiliar with J.M. Coetzee. He did win the Nobel Prize in Literature, and he has twice won the Booker, and one of them is for this book. But this book is so good that you really need to read it if you haven't. And he's a great writer. Waiting on the Barbarians, Elizabeth Costello, Disgrace, um, a number of books. He wrote a series of three books about him growing up. Um, I can't remember The Boy, The Youth, and I can't remember the third. They are also very, very, very good. But Disgrace is about a man who works at a university who has an inappropriate relationship with a student and basically is um, asked to resign and wind up, does wind up resigning. And he goes and lives on a farm in the middle of nowhere with his daughter. Now, G.M. Coetzee is South African, so the book is set in South Africa. And the pol politics and the political fever around where his daughter live are really changing and something horrendous happens and it's about them dealing with that situation it's about him dealing with the baggage that he always already brought to his daughter's house and it's really about coming to terms with the world in which you live and how it is changing he is a phenomenal writer disgrace is a phenomenally dark brutal book um, but you will not finish it without wanting to continue to read GM Kutsi and he will kick you into wanting to read again. I promise this book will do that for you. Three more little books to tell you about. This is uh, The Driver's Seat by Mariel Spark. Isn't that a great cover? This is the story of, I call her Lizzie, but I'm sure that's wrong. It's L-I-S-E. And she is a woman who has decided that she is bored and tired of her life. So she basically goes on an adventure, a very dark, dark adventure, searching out excitement. And that's all I'm going to tell you, because this book takes turns that I'm 100% sure that you will not see coming. She is unreliable in so many ways and charmingly deceitful and just awful and you will love her i promise she will definitely make you want to read about um more muriel sparks if you haven't read the prime of miss jean brody you really should read that too it's also a very short novel and could have made it in this list as well but this one's dark and it's kind of a thriller so you'll go through it quick and look it's not big at all so it can definitely break a reading slump really fast the next book i'm going to tell you about is the housekeeper and the professor by yuko um, Agawa and this was probably one of my favorite books that I read last year and I read her book Hotel Iris this year and that will likely be one of my top 10 favorite books of this year. This is the story of a housekeeper who was hired to take care of a professor who was in an accident and can only remember the past 80 or 85 minutes of his life. So he walks around with all of these stickies all over him to remind him of what's going on in his life. Now the housekeeper has a son. She brings him into the household. Um, she doesn't live there, but she cleans and cooks and stuff for him. And it's about their relationship. It's about how relationships are built when memory is not part of them and how they can be special and how every relationship, no matter how it's built, has its own power. Um, it is beautifully written. It is ridiculously powerful. Um, the housekeeper is just charmingly naive, but also charmingly motherly. That's a hard sentence to say. She's very motherly. She loves her son. She's doing everything she does for her son. Um, the relationship between the professor and her son is very, very good. And I loved this book. Actually, I've loved everything I've read by her. She has another English translation of three novellas that is sitting up there waiting for me to read, and um, I need to get to it. But that is The Housekeeper and the Professor by Yoka Agawa. And look, just look at this cover, guys. It is so pretty. And I was going to say, Junto Diaz says on the back, I've been telling everybody about this book. It's a story about love, which is quite different from a love story. It's one of the most beautiful novels. And 
Junto Diaz wrote The Brief and Wondrous Life of Oscar Wilde, which is one of my favorite books. He's written two short story collections, which are phenomenal. And anything he puts his uh, sign behind, you really should, his uh, oomph behind, you really should read. So please pick up this book. And that is it. That is six books to break a reading slump. I thought I had one more, and it's actually the book I'm reading. So I'm not going to tell you about that. So I hope you guys like this. If you've read any of these books, please tell me about it down below if you haven't and you think one of them can uh, be interesting to you. I'd love to talk about that as well. I hope you are all having a great day, and I'll be back in a couple days with another video. And uh, happy reading, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye!